I hope that you all are having a great Monday. Good morning. I hope you're having a great Monday. For those that are joining me live on Facebook, hello. For those of you who are joining me on my YouTube channel, thank you for subscribing. And I hope that you all will do the vice versa, I guess. For those of you who are following me on Facebook, I hope that you will go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. And for those who are watching me live on YouTube, I hope that you will go to my Facebook channel and subscribe. Did I say that right? If you're on Facebook, meet me on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, meet me on Facebook. How about that? And for all of you, wherever you are, I hope that you will visit my website and be prepared to join my mailing list so that I can let you know when I'm going to go live so that you can have a place to write me and write me back and that you will eventually become a part of my blog that will also be on Red Velvet uh, on redvelvet.com and eventually on crystaltuckerspeaks.com. I am so looking forward to seeing the people out in Texas when I come there to you next month. Uh, it's only a couple of weeks away. And I will be in Denton, Texas, and I will be making a couple of stops along the way to say hello to some of my other friends and family in other parts of Texas. Daytona Beach, Florida, get ready. I'm going to be with you for three days, October 6th, 7th, and 8th. And it is going to be a really, really great time. I hope to see all of my Daytona friends there. I was looking at some posts over the weekend. I wasn't able to hang out with you because I had two of the greatest drummers uh, ever in my home, Terry Saffold and the great Al Fielder, along with Melvin Housecat, the keyboard player, were all in my home over the weekend. I truly enjoyed those musicians, and eventually we're going to come to you live with some live jam sessions from right here in my home. Now, the topic at hand, I know that I teased you a little bit earlier when I told you that no matter what your title, no matter what your position was, no matter what your job title was on your job, no matter how many degrees you have, you're not as smart as you think you are until you've mastered one skill. And if you find out that you haven't mastered that skill, no matter how many degrees you have or how smart you think you are, you actually choose to be stupid when you don't make the effort to master that particular skill. Many years ago, one of the greatest movies that was ever recorded ever filmed, ever shot, ever put to the public through the theaters was Cool Hand Luke. It starred an iconic star. And that young actor played an inmate on a southern chain gang in a prison. And he and one of the officers, or possibly the warden, just could not get along. I believe that was Robert Redford. It was. He played Cool Hand Luke. And even though Cool Hand Luke was in a bad situation, he often exhibited greater character than those who were not criminals. Cool Hand Luke was a leader by nature and soon won over his comrade convicts, and fellow inmates, much to the chagrin of that one officer, one law enforcement officer, one correctional officer or warden who was charged with making sure that Luke not only served his time, but he thought that he had the personal charge in his life to break Luke because his own insecurities were brought to light by him. Of course, now that's another topic. I encourage you to watch the movie. Cool Hand Luke said one of the greatest lines ever and delivered it expertly when he said to this person 
that the reason that they couldn't get along, that the problem that they were having boiled down to one basic problem that affects all of us in our daily lives, on our jobs, in our homes, in our relationships with our children, our spouses, our family, and even with strangers when we have to interact with them when we don't do this well. Cool Hand Luke delivered that line when he looked at that officer and said, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Now, I don't think that anybody realized how great that line would be, how historic it would be in the film industry, and how important it is even to this day that most of the problems that we have in our relationships with others, whether they be personal, professional, casual, or in the form of customer service come from the fact that we fail to communicate with people effectively. There are many methods of communication, but one of the most important ones is that you must know how to talk to people. I see so many people every day who just, they just don't know how to talk to people. And awkward teenagers and young children have to be taught how to talk to people. I've seen young, awkward teenagers. I told you, a young lady walked up to me one day, oh, you got a pen? Now, that's a young teenager, young lady, who may not have been taught how to walk up to one, someone and say, excuse me, do you have a pen that I may borrow? But sadder still, there are people who are far past their teens. They are young adults, full-grown adults, people who are in administrative, management positions, and even executive positions in corporate America, in the working world. There are people who are in positions of authority, like police officers, who really don't know how to talk to people. And that is usually the first thing that gets the ball to rolling when things spiral out of control between two, pe two people, two groups of people, or in any interaction. I have met people who like to spout off their accolades and their degrees. And I know that there may be some of you watching who have every alphabet behind your name except a Q and a Z. You may have more degrees than a thermometer, but I have watched you up close and from a distance demonstrate to others that you are no more than an educated fool because you don't know how to talk to people. If you don't know how to talk to people, whatever you have, whatever you know, whatever you can do becomes of no effect. It's worthless. Because one of the greatest tools you have in influencing other people is how you say what it is that you say. It has often been said, it's not what you say, but how you say it. There are many of us that don't know what to say. And there are some of us who think we know what to say, but we really don't because we don't know how to say it. I have watched many managers, administrators, potential CEOs, actual CEOs, and people from all walks of life crash and burn, destroy their careers, hit bumps in the road that they cannot navigate around because they don't know how to talk to people. When I first started working as a nurse, I had the unique experience to work in a maximum security prison. And I had to give care, administer medications, and do assessments on death row. At that time, I had a son to feed, bills to pay. And being scared of the ones that was locked up didn't make much sense when I realized that there were just as many criminals walking around on the street that hadn't been caught. I never was threatened, harmed, abused, or violated in any way by any inmate in any part of that prison. And that prison housed some of the most dangerous men in the state of Alabama. 
convicted murderers, and even one serial killer. But not one time did I ever have a serious problem with any inmate that I could not control or assist that inmate and me to come to a better understanding. It never happened. Of course, you had those who were disrespectful, unruly, even those that were mentally ill. But when I first encountered these men, the first thing that I let them know is that I had sense enough to not only administer the care that they need, but to respect them as human beings. Regardless of what their crime was, they were still human. And no matter how long they were going to be there, each individual still believed that they deserved a certain amount of respect. And they were right. And so it is with every other human that you encounter. They deserve basic courtesy, common courtesy, decency, and respect when you are interacting with them. And when you don't know how to interact with people from a level of mutual respect, nothing will get accomplished, no matter how smart you are, no matter how many degrees you have, no matter what position and level of responsibility you have been given on the job and in any organization. It just doesn't work. Some of the most effective people that I know that got the greatest amount of good did or done did not actually put their hands on anything. But they were able to motivate and inspire a talented team of people to give their best to accomplish great things. One of the greatest leaders that I have ever witnessed was actually my grandfather, Dr. S.C. Tucker. He told me once, he says, it's not that I'm so smart. It's just that I'm smart enough to choose people to be on my team that smart as or smarter than I am. And I have learned that you have to encourage people and build people up to know what their potential is and then motivate them to use that potential to do the best job they can do and be the best person they can be. And you can't get that not knowing how to talk to anybody. There were times that when he was around the house, he would be short with my grandmother. But I think in his own way, he realized that, and he would soon do something to fix it. He was very, very careful at how he presented himself in public, even though when he was at home, his imperfections and faults as a human often showed. But he inspired people to do better in their personal lives, their professional lives, and even to this day, he is loved and respected by many simply because he knew how to treat people. And the basic part of knowing how to treat people was that he knew how to talk to them, not just as a great orator and public speaker, but on a personal individual level, he knew how to be humorous, funny, tactful, and kind. You just can't go around talking to folks any kind of way and talking crazy to folks. They won't receive that well, and they won't receive you well. Before people accept anything that you have to offer, they do it because they like you or they like something about you. Now, you can't go around walking around all day wondering about or worrying about who likes you. But in order to be respected as a person, in any capacity, you must show respect. And most of us can be most disrespectful if, with our mouths if we don't realize the damage that it does to us personally and professionally. And it also rots you from the inside out. Because as you make a habit of talking crazy to folks, being flip and rude with people, you begin to think that that is the way to be. And eventually it becomes who you are. And you become such a rotten person that you can't stand nobody. Nobody can stand you and you can't even stand yourself. As a young nurse, first moving into a management position and eventually into an administrative position, I too had to learn that even in stressful situations that I had to be very aware of my body language and my verbal communication. 
because naturally I may not have a smile on my face all the time. My voice is rather direct. So I had to, by trial and error, sometimes failing to do that which is best, learn how to present myself to people so that I did not come off as threatening, rude, mean, or just come off to some people and be perceived as a bitch. Now, I'm not telling you to go around here kissing somebody. But you need to know that it is so important to be kind. It is so important to be nice. Don't you know, hasn't your grandmother or somebody told you it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice? I can't tell you how many people I've seen come in like a bulldozer thinking that they were just going to do what they wanted, the way they wanted, and they could just talk to people any kind of way. If nothing else, honey, that probably led to their downfall more than anything else. The great Eleanor Roosevelt said that people will never forget how you make them feel. That may not be the exact verbiage, but I can assure you that I have met people and people have met me. I have encountered them. I may not have remembered what they had on. I may not have remembered even everything that they said during the encounter. But I remember keenly how I felt in their presence. And when I saw them again, or if I've never seen them again, I still hold in my memory that feeling. And it determines whether I ever want to be around that person again or how I will handle them the next time I see them. When you meet people, they may not remember your name. They may not remember what you had on. They may not remember any of that verbiage that you were telling them when you were spitting off your academic accolades, your degrees, how much money you have, where you live, what kind of car you drive, where you bought your outfit, pocketbook, and shoes, but they are going to remember how they felt in your presence. And one of the great key factors of how people feel around you is how you talk to them. Even the scriptures tells you that the right kinds of words will either turn away wrath and the wrong kind of words will stir it up. It's Monday. And many of you will be walking into meetings, making presentations, interacting with your staff, and some of you interacting with your superiors. You'll get so much done, so much easier, if you just simply learn how to speak to people with respect and to make sure that when that interaction is over, that you leave their dignity intact. Even the most unpleasant messages can be delivered with kindness. There are some people who believe that I don't like the police. No, that's not true. I have people at the highest level of law enforcement in my family. And I have a very dear friend who means the world to me, who was once in one of the highest levels of law enforcement. I think that they rose to those levels because they knew how to effectively communicate with people. I even had a dear friend tell me that in his 40 year law career, he only had to draw his weapon once. I think that some of the greatest tragedies that we see where many men and women lose their lives or are injured and careers have been ruined by law enforcement officers and involving law enforcement officers is because somebody either in the car or standing on the side of the road didn't know how to talk to anybody. It could be that the person in the car was rude, disrespectful, and caused the simple traffic stop to escalate. But I do know for a fact that there are many bullets behind a badge who don't know how to talk to people and don't know that they need to know how to talk to people. I wonder how many lives could have been saved, how many deaths could have been prevented, if people simply learned how to communicate with each other. I wonder how many divorces could have been prevented if the ball to the demise of a marriage had never started rolling because we knew how to talk to each other. I wonder how many careers would still be intact 
if people knew how to talk to each other. I wonder how many families would not be broken if people knew how to talk to each other. I wonder how many relationships could have moved forward and blossomed into something healthy and beautiful if people had known how to talk to each other. I wonder how many companies and corporations would have still been in business or would have reached their potential if people simply knew how to talk to each other. I wonder on this day, how many teams, how many projects will fail, how much money and time will be wasted in companies, hospitals, factories, and on job sites all around the country and all around the world because people refuse to know how to talk to each other. And then I wonder at the end of the day how some of you will feel when you have been verbally abused by a person who's too stupid to know that they need to learn how to communicate better. And I wonder how some of you will feel when you take time to reflect upon your behavior knowing that you could have said it better. You could have been a lot nicer. I've been guilty of it. I had to cultivate how to talk to people and how to make sure that I presented myself in the best light when speaking to people. And the most important thing is that I had to know how to speak to a person so that I did not disrespect them or make any assault to their dignity. Every single person on the face of the earth, no matter their station in life, is worth respect. And even more important than respect is the fact that you must understand that those people have feelings just like you. And even though you may not be able to treat everybody the same, you can treat everybody right. And it starts with simply knowing how to control what you can control by knowing how to fitly and aptly speak to a person in a way that does not tear them down. Now, you all know that I can come with the show enough raw truth, but I'm not speaking directly to one person when I do that. And even when I have to let a person know that their behavior or their words toward me was wrong. There's a right way and a wrong way to do that. I hope that this video helps someone. I hope, I hope that it has helped those of you who may have been verbally abused by partners, bosses, uh, people who are in authority. I hope you will know that your self-esteem should not suffer because the way they spoke to you is not a reflection of you. It's a reflection of them. And I hope that those of us who have been guilty of not using verbal communication effectively will know better now and do better. I hope that you all have a great productive day. I hope that you take this to the heart because it comes from my heart. If you've been spoken to in a wrong way, try not to hold a grudge and realize that some people just don't know any better. And if you've spoken to someone in a wrong way, I hope that you'll be big enough to apologize and know that the next time you should do better. Remember, I want you to be good to yourself so you can be good to other people. And I'll see you later.